I'm Maggie Monahan, and I'm a member of the Bosch One Group. My name is Ann Richard, and I'm Bosch Two. My name's Chris Kocho, I'm Bosch Five. My name is Jeannie Ireland, and I was Bosch 18. My name is Lenise Collins, and I was Bosch 21. My name is Amanda Mertens Campbell, and I'm Bosch 22. My name is Fred Fucci, Bosch 9 program. My name is Brad Shingleton, and I was in Bosch 3. My name is Katie Oakley, and I'm Bosch 24. And I'm Mary Plum Peterson, proud member of Bosch 15, otherwise known as the Fellowship Class of 1998-1999. And I'll be your tour guide, as it were, for the next few minutes as we take a walk down memory lane. It all began back in 1984. Ronald Reagan was president. Little-known artists Madonna and Prince were new on the pop culture scene. Everyone wanted to bust some ghosts and get foot loose. And over in Stuttgart, Germany, the Robert Bosch Stiftung was hatching a plan to combat a Cold War that was heating up. At the peak of the Cold War, uh, there were some very difficult decisions to be made on the Na in NATO and with the stationing of missiles, American and Russian missiles, and the uh, Cold War battlefield, which was Germany and both parts of Germany. The Robert Bosch Stiftung felt the need to do something for the transatlantic friendship because uh, there were signs that it would cool off in the middle of this, well, Cold War. The solution? An experiment. Bring a group of young professional Americans, future leaders, to Germany with the intention of giving them practical job experience in their respective career fields while planting the seeds for improved transatlantic relations. I was in grad school down in Austin, Texas, and uh, one of my math teachers came in one day and said, you know, I want to tell you about this incredible program. It's seven months in Europe. It incorporates a stay in France, uh, Berlin, um, uh, Brussels, and of course, everyone in the class sat up to listen. And then she said, but there's also a German language prerequisite and everybody's like oh yeah you know who knows German. Margaret Monaghan was in that first Bosch class. There were 14 of us. Eight women, six men, four spouses and one significant other. Flashbacks of people saying oh no another five course dinner but we only finished lunch an hour ago. Bosch One Fellow stayed in Germany for just seven months completing two stages or internships. The recommendation to the Stiftung keep the program going and expand its duration. Thankfully, the Stiftung listened and more fellowship classes followed, built with spirited young Americans ages 23 to 34 from the fields of law, finance, government, journalism, eager to learn, eager to teach. Since its inception, much about the fellowship program has changed and much has stayed the same. First, what's changed? Well, a wall for one thing, make it the wall. The wall was um, both fascinating and horrifying at the same time. It really ran through the whole city, from the center of the city, right through the Brandenburg Gate area. I just remember it by the Reichstag and um, the layer after layer of wall and barbed wire and East German patrol boats in, in, in the spray and lots of crosses and, and wreaths. Um, and uh, I vividly recall when we lived uh, in Berlin, uh, the last person trying to cross the wall died. He, uh, I forget his name now, but he was in a hot air balloon, but it was the month of February, the balloon went too high, and he froze to death. And his body uh, landed in the West. And when that wall did fall in 1989, Bosch fellows were among those celebrating. One of the big lessons I took away from the Berlin Wall falling was never say never. Um, you know, it was just accepted when we were there that the wall was a permanent feature of the German landscape. And so when people tell me things are impossible or just can't be considered, I take that on board, but there's a small piece of my brain that says, yeah, but we were told the Berlin Wall would never fall. 
And so it makes me much more ready to think about impossible options. The fall of the wall ushered in all kinds of other changes. Goodbye Bonn as West German capital, hello Berlin. Goodbye Deutschmark, hello Euro. As for what stayed the same in the program, well, quite a few things. Language training for one, bring back any memories? Only a smattering of fellows required German language training in the early days of the program. But today, most incoming fellows require at least a month's worth of German lessons, and many require far more. I hadn't taken language lessons in probably like 15 or 16 years, so I was a little bit intimidated, and I really started from zero. I, probably the only thing I knew how to say was, you know, Don Cachon from that Frank Sinatra song. Don Cachon, darling, Don Cachon. I knew um, the basic words that most Americans will know of German, kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wunderkind. Uh, I knew Schadenfreude, the words that we sort of use uh, regularly. That's how much German that I knew. It was very challenging, and our teacher here in the U.S. had warned us of that. And she used to point her finger at me and say, you know, particularly you, you're a lawyer, and you know, lawyers are very difficult, and uh, you know, you're you're used to being in control of everything, and you were just going to be, you know, have no control. And uh, she was right. I was slightly daunted by the fact that I didn't speak any German. Uh, however, having gone through three years of law school immediately prior to the Bosch program, where I was learning a foreign language, so to speak, uh, there, I thought German can't be that difficult. And what did you find? It was slightly more difficult than I thought, and five years later, well, my German skills were passable to uh, get me through Germany, but uh, let's just say that there's even some things that the Bosch Foundation can't do. But as scores of fellows can attest, months of language training, lots of practice makes perfect or at least near perfect. We got to the point where at night um, in a bar, after a couple of beers, you'd forget if you were speaking German or English. And that was really exciting. It took, it took a couple months to get to that point. Um, but once you hit it, it was amazing. By the end of the year, I was being sent out by Reuters to cover uh, all kinds of things, museum openings, World War II, uh, uh, exhibits, uh, all kinds of news events, and I was required to, uh, to do my reporting in German.